Hello everyone. Welcome if you're new, which you probably are because this is my literal second video. My name is Tara and this is Green Cottage Design. Today we're going to be hemming some curtains as part of a bedroom slash office makeover. This will be the first in a multi-part series of videos. I don't know how much detail I've shared yet, but basically I am making over our bedroom and office. You can see here I've got some lengths recorded for these curtains because I'm trying to hem them. They are now installed over a dresser, whereas before they were not. They've also been chewed on by my dog when he was a puppy and had separation anxiety <laughs> one of the first few times we let him out of his crate. So they've been in need of some, uh, shall we say, alteration for some time. What I'm doing now is just measuring the length that I want the curtain to be based on the notes that I showed earlier and just measuring that at about the center of the curtain as well as both edges along the seam. And the nice thing about these curtains actually is that they have this geometric pattern on them which is laid straight. So I found that what I was actually able to do was just kind of trace a line through the same spot, this little X, as you can kind of halfway see. I promise eventually I'll figure out framing. I'm kind of halfway there, so, you know, heh. Um, so as you can see, I'm just cutting along that line that I marked with chalk and folding up the excess um, to be used for something later. This is a couple of days later. I am just pulling out the curtain that I've already cut down just to double check the measurements because I could not find my notebook and literally five minutes later I found it underneath my purse so that's fun. That's just you know a day in the life of working from home I suppose and only leaving the house very rarely. In any case, uh, here I'm just doing the same thing. I'm measuring along the sides and the middle again. There you can see uh, the culprit responsible for the chewing, or whatever you want to call it. That is Simon. He was about six months old when we adopted him from the Humane Society, and uh, he's definitely had some separation anxiety issues. We think he was like a street dog or something before he was brought to the shelter. So. He has since made a lot of progress and has not chewed up any more curtains, thankfully. Now I'm just uh, trimming them to that line, as you can see, same as before, and you'll notice that it's at a different point on the pattern. That's just because the curtains themselves are cut at different points on the pattern. You may have noticed as well that there's um, a white sheer lining to this which I actually really kind of like. It's a two-in-one kind of thing, so you don't have to have separate shears. But that does present an issue, as you'll see later on, when I go to hem everything and have to try and kind of figure out that uh, junction there. What I ended up doing, I'm not the biggest fan of, but it, you know, it's the back of a curtain. It faces a wall. No one's going to see it. And it's my first sewing project in a while, so... Anyway, moving on, as you can see here, I'm just ironing the edges and one thing, I do not own a single other thing in my life that I would care to iron. I really don't. But if you're going to pursue sewing as a hobby, I really, you gotta get it. You gotta have an iron. You gotta press your seams. There is no way to be able to sew without losing your freaking mind if you do not press your seams. I've tried <laughs> because there was a time I did not have an iron and I wanted to sew and I'm stubborn and it did not go well for me. As we can see here, this is about a half inch seam allowance. I would recommend if you are newer to sewing that you would give yourself more like three quarters to an inch of a seam allowance just because it's a lot better to have a little bit of excess fabric rather than run out or not have enough. I just erred on the side of half an inch because I it's a straight seam and I know that I can sew a straight seam pretty decently, so I just went ahead with the half inch seam allowance. Here you can see I am ripping the seam along the edge of the lining and the main curtain so that I can fold up that bottom seam. And here I've just 
kind of double run the pin a little bit, just stuck the end back in. I have extra long pins, so I just like to do this for a little bit of added security. This is really slippy fabric, so the more I can secure pins, the more likely it is that they are to actually stay put. And as you can see here, I'm just following the pattern. What I want to do along the bottom of these curtains, uh, as you saw in the beginning, is sew a seam line along the very, very edge, just about two or three threads maybe in from the edge, just to kind of flatten that down. So I'm pinning along that edge just to make it easier to follow along, although you can also just follow the edge of the foot. I did just recently get uh, this sewing machine as a birthday present. I've been wanting one for a long time, and up to now just didn't either have the space or the money for one. So I bought a whole bunch of different colored threads, and of course none of them is quite right? But I'm just going with this kind of tannish beige one because I'm using small stitches, and it's really not going to show up that much. So if you find yourself in the same situation, honestly, just go with your gut and go with the one that looks the closest, especially if it's a light thread on a light fabric, as long as they're similar in tone, it's really not going to show up that much. And if anyone is looking that closely at your seams anyway, that, that, I mean, I feel like they've got other problems at that point, honestly, or they're a sewing instructor, in which case they should be looking that closely at your seams, and they would have every right to critique in that case. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here you can see I'm just sewing along that bottom edge like I was talking about, just really, really close to the edge. This is pretty difficult to do, but I really wanted that bottom edge to be crisp and flat, so I decided to go for it, and as you can see, it worked out. I'm actually really proud of this. I kind of winged it a little bit. It's been quite a long time since I sewed consistently. I just recently got back into it, and so taking on something like this is maybe not the wisest decision, but hey, you know. Anywho, as you can see now, I'm just going and sewing along that top part to attach it to the main body of the curtain, and I'm trying to follow along more the pattern itself than the fold line because the fabric itself didn't fold perfectly straight and that's okay it happens having the pattern there is really helpful and if i didn't have the pattern there i would have wanted to trace it with chalk or a pencil or something here you can see i'm just showing the final result the edges are a little messy but i haven't cleaned them up or trimmed them yet and you can just see that line running through approximately the same spot. It started out a little high, but I was able to correct it and just kind of run it through. Now that I have the main body of the curtain, the length that I want it, I can go ahead and trim the liner. What I want to do is keep it separate from the main curtain, like the bottom, instead of sewing it onto the main curtain. And so what I've just done is pinned along a center point-ish, about an inch and a quarter, I would say down uh, along the bottom hem. Now I've just got that extra fabric set aside for cabbage. And essentially what I'm gonna do is give myself about, I wanna say about an inch and a quarter seam allowance. You will be able to see here, I actually ended up cutting this very unevenly. So what I'm doing is just kind of trying to follow along by eye and stay within one or two threads along that line because that is laid more straight you know, it was machine made, so it's straighter than I can make it anyway. Anyway, So I'm just pinning along that edge and along like the very, very corner here, it starts getting a little dicey. Um, the reason it gets a little dicey is because I'm rolling this hem under. And at that point, there's not a whole lot left to roll under. It works out in the end, but I was getting a little bit nervous there for a second. The reason that I'm pinning this here before rolling the hem down is that I want to press the seam. Again, I'm not, so for the sheer, I'm not going to sew this part down, but I do want it pressed just for the sake of pressing it. Again, always press your seams, to quote the great Bernadette Banner and many, many other wise seamstresses and se seamsters? What would be the male equivalent of seamstress? Editing Terry here. It is, in fact, and indeed, seamster. How did I know that? Anyway, uh, always press your seams, is my point. Here, now that that is pressed, I am just going back and rolling that hem under. 
again trying to stay within one or two threads in a straight line and pinning and at the very end there I just ended up adding a, another extra couple of pins to hold it in place and then again just pressing that down so that it doesn't bubble up as much when I go to sew it and really it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just kind of pressing around and kind of stepping the iron around the pins it's not like a, a garment or the fancy front facing thing so again it doesn't have to be perfect here i'm now just seam ripping where i originally just cut the lining i really don't know why i just cut it instead of seam ripping it to begin with but we have to cut it up higher anyway so that's fine so here i'm just going along the bottom of the second curtain and doing that bottom seam and i figured i would show another angle just to for the sake of showing another angle <laughs> honestly and I'll have a close-up here in a minute so you can kind of see how I figured out the corners. Um, essentially, I didn't. <laughs> I just treated it as an end and and doubled back and, and took, the, uh, took the seam off rather than trying to navigate that corner. It, there's not really much point. It's a curtain. It doesn't it doesn't have to have a side seam. It doesn't have to round the corner. I tend to get a little over ambitious with stuff like this and it turns out it's a good thing I didn't try it around the corner because my thread got caught on itself, which is really infuriating, but I'm using cotton thread. So honestly, I did it to myself. Pro tip, if you're using a sewing machine, frankly, nylon thread is gonna be better. I just have a personal preference for cotton thread. That's all. Uh, but if it keeps getting caught like that, I may I may end up caving and, and swapping out to nylon thread, <laughs> honestly. Here you can see I'm just cutting the second lining um, of, of the second curtain. And this one I actually ended up not hemming. What I'd like to do eventually is attempt to hand sew it. Hand sewing has been a hobby I've kind of wanted to take up for a while. So I figured I'd leave an, in a not visible hem as sort of a practice piece that I can do whenever. So now that both curtains are done, I'm just going ahead and hanging them up. Like I said, these are going in our bedroom and we have a relatively small window in here, but that's kind of nice because we like it to be dark when we're sleeping. Both of us, my husband and I are sensitive to light. So having A, a double layered curtain and B, a smaller window in our bedroom is preferable. And so as you can see now, I'm just kind of dressing it up. We also have this um, really, really beautiful leaded glass window pane that my husband found. We got it at either a garage sale or like a secondhand or antique shop. I, I don't remember which. Either way, we've had it for a while and it was a great find. Here you can see I'm just kind of showing the bottom edge again and how it kind of breaks along the top of the dresser. Please ignore the peeling veneer. We don't talk about it. And as you can see here, it's just long enough where it hits the top of the dresser, but it's not cascading all over it or pooling or anything like that. Finally, here we see some high quality grade A professional seam work. <laughs> Just really top-notch stuff. I may end up hand tacking that down underneath eventually, but we'll see. Over here at the other end, you can see that unfinished hem on the liner I was talking about. This side ended up coming out a little cleaner, which I was happy about. And so that hand sew seam bit I'll end up doing eventually. But for now, nobody has to know it's there.